technically that's an undo, but the last thing I did was click play. So it moved them to the scenario before they played. Let's do this. Let's try changing um, the restitution coefficients. Right, so the coefficient for restitution specifies the bounciness of the material. Formally, this is the ratio of the relative speed after the collision to relative speed before the collision. Two objects with restitution equals one will bounce elastically without losing any energy. That's an interesting claim. Let's go test that out. So we'll give this one a uh, restitution of one. We'll give this one under material a restitution of one. So it really focuses on these intensive properties that we try to get students to think about the density, the mass, friction the coefficient restitution attraction i'm not sure what that does can i get it add a force that acts like newton's law of gravity so you can even do gravity in space here uh okay corresponds to the gravitational constant cool all right why don't we try the collision first <clears throat> did that change stick i don't know if that changed stuff yes it did all right so we got two restitutions of one so we should be able to maintain the total energy here. Notice they are much bouncier now, right? Uh, they're still losing some energy with this object. So I suppose I need to do the same thing here and make this one's restitution one. Because there's there's no, um, you know, there, there's no objects here that are immune to any of the stuff that's going on. Uh, let's click pause and put these folks back up here. Actually, I probably don't want them falling from as high now that they're not losing any energy. Uh, why don't we clear these graphs just to start over? All right, I want to see some energy conserved here. Oh, they even missed each other there. Oh, goodness. How, how long until they actually collide? So they are losing some kinetic energy there to the gravitational potential energy and to uh, the the ramp here. But you notice they're sticking around a lot longer, right? So they're the, the energy is sticking around um, all right, come on, let's get a collision. There we go. They, we've got a little boop there. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Uh, I wonder, can I adjust their properties in real time? Like if I hit play and I start taking this thing's, well, let's, let's actually do this. Let's actually uh, undo sim start. Do sim start. There we go. I wonder, can I right click on this thing? If I grab material here, can I click play and start dragging down its restitution as I go? I certainly can. Look at that thing. It's not as bouncy anymore. I can even adjust these things in real time. You have to obviously get this menu open at the start. I don't know if there's a way to... Oh, you can just detach it. Oh my goodness. This thing never fails to disappoint. Uh, so what I can do with this, I can have this thing start out here. I can adjust its restitution coefficient in real time to watch what happens. I mean, oh my goodness, what a great way to just have a student explore the way the physics is working. I mean, imagine you you assign your students a warm-up assignment to do this, where literally it's just play around with this and try to get Algo do to do a thing instead of just reading a static textbook, right? Still read the textbook because there's important information in there, but I mean this this is this is how students are going to learn is by exploring all this cool stuff. <clears throat> all right, I want to try out this gravitational attraction thing. That's going to require us to do a few things. First, let's save this as a very crude ramp. There we go. And now what I want to do is uh, I am I am I am uh, I am paused right now. So we're going to delete the ramp because I don't need that. I don't think I need this boundary here. Um, I have turned off the air friction and the buoyancy. And there's actually um, options under here. If you double click, you can adjust the, the drag force. Um, so let's actually turn that off. Oh, I can get a grid. That's right. Oh, yes. Uh, is there a way I can zoom? You might be able to zoom with a scroll wheel. Uh, oh, that's cool. Um, default view. There we go. You might be able to zoom in the scroll, but I don't have one on my computer right now. Uh, but this is uh, is the is the constant gravitational field. So this is if you want to do kind of standard <coughs> first semester physics, projectile motion, whatever. This is setting the gravitational field that falls downward, or maybe it doesn't have to draw fall downward. Maybe you want to adjust that direction there, uh, so you could have gravity going sideways. Uh, you can also show the gravitational field, which is pretty cool. We're actually going to turn that off for right now because I want to do gravity in space. So for this one, what I'm going to do, 
or at least if I understand this, add a force that acts like Newton's law of gravity. This value corresponds to the gravitational constant. Okay, uh, I don't remember which one I'm on there, so let's just go over here. We're gonna go to material, and let's make this, um, like maybe this. <clears throat> All right, fall off linear and quadratic. I'm not sure that. Let the amount of the attractive force decrease linearly with the distance. That needs to be quadratic because it needs to go one over r squared. I guess that's so you can test different versions of the of, of a force between the two. <clears throat> oh my goodness, there's a controller option. All right, I'm going to come back to that later. I, right, you know, this, this, you know, this is like a kid in a candy store. Oh my goodness. All right, we're going to have this thing. I think I set the other one to one. What do these do? Immortal. True, this geometry will never be killed by a killer geometry. Killer, if true, this geometry will kill any geometry it comes in contact with, except for immortals. I, you know, I, I'm a little disappointed you can't kill the immortals. I would love to see what happens when, uh, when in the end there can only be one. Um, all right, so let's clear that. Let's clear this. Let's graph. Yeah, kinetic energy is fine. So if I do this, they are attracted to each other. <clears throat> I think they had an initial velocity there. Uh, and they had enough velocity to uh, to escape from each other there. Uh, let's go to zoom the scene. There we go. All right, so is there a way that I... Whoa, this is actually moving along the grid now. Oh, when you turn on the grid, it actually snaps to the grid, huh? Number of axes, two and three snapped grid. That's pretty cool. You know, I wouldn't mind having a hex grid on here uh, to maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I say that, I might like that, I might not. Um, <clears throat> let's see, is there a way I can set this thing's velocity? I can, okay. So let's try setting this thing's velocity to zero. Good. We're gonna change this one's velocity to just in the vertical direction. I want to try to get it to orbit around the other one. So let's have it orbit in the vertical direction and we're going to place these two, uh, this is where the grid comes in handy because I want to place these two at the same Y coordinate. Okay, let us clear our work here. Let's see what happens now with this gravity force. <clears throat> okay, it is getting deflected a little bit. Uh, it's moving too fast, so let's reset that. Uh, let's increase the gravity by moving them closer together. And there we go. So it's getting attracted to the penguin. The penguin's getting attracted to the green one. And now I run into the issue of I have a net momentum upward. And so now I can uh, give this thing a velocity in the opposite direction so that I have a net zero momentum. And the beautiful thing is with this type of activity, a student can just discover that, right? You don't have to tell them that necessarily. They can kind of discover it. Uh, why don't we visualize velocity? Oh, yes. Good. We've got a velocity vector here, and I actually need to put that in the uh, y direction, not the x direction. There we go. Give me the same thing on here. <clears throat> Velocities, visualize velocity. Oh, I can even visualize momentum. Yeah, they've got equal masses now, but I could change the masses. All right, now let's see what happens. All right, velocities, that was, velocities are too fast. Velocity too fast, okay. So, uh, I need this velocity to come down a bit. So let's make it a, how about a 0 0.1? There we go. Uh, and then I need to do the same thing here. Velocities, <clears throat> this is everything I would do in a glow script code. It's just, um, I just click and drag to do it. Okay, so we need to split the difference on those. Control Z. It's great that they collide against each other, right? So, so we don't usually have that programmed in on a um, on a gravitational force code. Usually, they they end up just flinging off of each other, and students think they broke physics. Um, cool. Why don't we take this up, split the difference with a half, and split the difference with a half. There we go. All right, let's try that now. Oh my goodness. I think we've got it. I think we might have an orbit. Come on, velocities. Yes. Okay, I think we got a closed orbit now. Um, one of the things I can do somewhere over here is change the simulation speed. So if I feel like this is taking too long, I can just click and drag this up. And there you have it. You've got this nice, cool binary star orbit. 
And how long did that take us? Under 20 minutes. That takes my students a good hour, hour and a half to do with the code. I suspect it'll take a lot shorter time to do with Algo Do here.